Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the virtual church gathering of Lincoln Park United Methodist Church, Linwood United Methodist Church. Glad that you can be here with us this morning. We're getting kind of used to this, but we don't want to get too used to it. Um, looking forward to the time that we can be back together in our buildings, but we're glad that we can be together in the home edition of our churches, at least for now. Some of you may be joining us for the first time. We are once again gathering via Facebook Live and audio teleconference. Just a little reminder, if you're on Facebook, you can type in the comment box that is below or beside the video. And when I can pay attention to it, I will see it, as will everyone else. If you're joining us live or if you're listening to the recording later, please say hello in that comment box so we'll know you're here. I saw Barbara Nelson a little earlier, others that are typing in, so glad that you are with us. When we later ask for prayer requests, that comment box is the way to share those as well. If you're joining via teleconference using your phones, I have all the incoming calls muted right now so that you only hear what is coming from my phone. When we ask for prayer requests, I will unmute those phones, and when you speak, everyone will be able to hear you, including the folks who are on Facebook Live. I've got the phone right by the microphone, and they pick up pretty well. As someone who has participated in numerous teleconferences, though, let me give a word of advice. Always assume everyone can hear you all the time. That avoids some embarrassment. If you're not on our email list, you might want to join so you can stay up to date uh, I'll be mentioning in just a moment, for instance, we're doing some church socials via Zoom, and uh, that's how you get the information for that. So if you are not on that list, drop me an email or call me. You can reach me at don, that's D-O-N-N, -N, at lincolnparkmethodist.org, or go to our website at lincolnparkmethodist.org, and you'll find a link there. So as we are... Um, Continuing in our worship this morning, uh, one of the things that we always want to give attention to is that the work of the church goes on, and so if you would like to contribute financially toward that work, we have three ways that you can do so while we're unable to gather together in the same space. One of those ways is holston.org slash church offering. I've got mine set up right here, and I just hit the button to submit payment. And there it is. I've got my receipt. So that, uh, that actually avoids uh, germs and such, I guess. You can also send a check in the mail. You can make use of PayPal. And you don't have to have a PayPal account in order to use PayPal. Details for that are on our web page. You've got the address if you're on Facebook Live on that screen. And it is available through uh, the, the church website. So we appreciate those who are continuing to take part in worship and support the church that way. Uh, certainly, uh, it is something that is a, a bit challenging at this time. Uh, and at the same time, we recognize that individuals are having financial challenges. So we don't want this to be obligation, but rather opportunity. And we appreciate the participation. If you're on Facebook Live, remember that the recording will be available later on the Facebook page. You can go to Lincoln Park Methodist uh, on Facebook where you're finding this right now. Uh, we have folks from our sister church, uh, Linwood United Methodist Church and Lincoln Park United Methodist Church. We encourage you to share the recording with friends and family. We know that there are a lot of folks who are feeling uh, alone, anxiety, all kinds of stuff going on right now, and so this can be a resource to help. I know we have visitors this morning who are here from uh, various pages on Facebook, and we're glad you're here, whether you're live or joining us via the recording. A special welcome to you. One of my ongoing jokes is I suspect the church in Jerusalem started with announcements, and of course that's what we're doing. I want to be sure that uh, folks know that we are having that Zoom social that I mentioned, just getting together and, and talking as, as a, uh, a community. And we would invite you for that, but we're not putting the information out in public because of hackers and that kind of thing. So if you're on our email list, you will get that information. 
Uh, you can still call in with just a telephone, especially for those of you who are with us on the teleconference. It's a different phone number than what we use for Sunday mornings, but we can still get you connected. If you would like to join that, um, you can drop me an email, you can get on our email list, or call me for connection information. Uh, well, here's another announcement. Uh, do you happen to have messages for the folks at NHC Healthcare? A lot of you know that we were supposed to start doing a service for them. The, this is the, um, uh, the facility that is close to the old St. Mary's Hospital in Knoxville. We were supposed to start doing a service for them at 2 p.m. on the first Sunday of each month. We were supposed to start in April, and you know how things have gone with the pandemic. We weren't able to physically be with them, but we did send a message for the staff there to photocopy, and, and uh, they said that the, the folks there really appreciate it. So I want to encourage you to think ahead a little bit, and if you'd like to send a message of hope or encouragement to the folks at NHC, uh, it's, it's kind of lonely being in there, and um, we've had uh, folks from our church who have have uh, been in that facility, and um, I think they can testify to that, that it's, it's good to have the connection. The staff there will make copies of the message that we send them and share it with the residents. You can send those messages to me, again, through email, or we'll make other arrangements to get them, but I think that would be a really good way to serve them. We're at a good place in our service to ask for prayer requests, so let me turn to... Um, I'm, I'm going to unmute the telephones, and then I'll also take a look Conference at, unmuted. at what's going on on Facebook to see what um, uh, what requests. Uh, I do see uh, Debbie Rogers, Brian Mitchell, John Hitt all have joined us on Facebook. Uh, what prayer requests or joys? Want to want to focus a little bit on the joys that we might have as well. Pat, I know uh, you gave us before we started uh, an update on how Barbara is doing since uh, we've got more folks on with us right now. How is Barbara today? Well, she's still in continuous pain. Uh, when she lays flat, she's no, the pain is, uh, goes away. When she gets up uh, to go to the restroom, and uh, that hurts. And then if she tries to sit up, uh, that hurts too. But... Uh, uh, anyway, we're going to have a, a X-ray on her uh, or MRI on Wednesday on her brain, and to see if that was injured in the fall. That, that's the neurologist that wants that, and then uh, Dr. Uh, Madigan, the KOC, wants more X-rays on her back. But that will not be until Friday. That's as soon as we could get in. But uh, when we have the, the X-rays from the back, especially, we'll know how we're going to treat this uh, spinal fracture that she has and it's in lumbar or L2 is where the, uh, the problem is but anyway uh, just continue to pray for her and the, and, and the pain that she's in and uh, just remember her for that indeed indeed a lot of pain a lot of doctor's appointments coming up yes we do and uh, and also mom uh, continue to pray for her she's by herself so to speak and, uh, but anyway uh, she goes Tuesday, we're going to try to figure out how to do it to, to, to start the process to see if she's going to, I mean, to start the process for hopefully, and she will have eye surgery uh, for the cancer on her eyelid. And Dr. Drennan, her, the family doctor, has to give the first okay, then we go to the anesthesiologist to see if she could be put to sleep. That's still scheduled for May 11th, and we'll play it by ear as far as everything going on, but then uh, hopefully that'll take place then. Okay, very good, and uh, prayers for Pat Bernie, because Pat, you've got a lot on your shoulders right now. Well, no, I know the prayers are. Where I, I feel the prayers out there from y'all and uh, everywhere, and I'm, I'm just thankful for him and thankful for my church family. And I think C. Mildred or somebody said earlier that we 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 can't wait till we can all be together again, and that's for sure. Indeed, indeed. Uh, at Lincoln Park Church. Indeed. I see on Facebook right now Harold Rogers is on there as well, so uh, and and lots of other folks who haven't said anything. So glad glad you're with us. Does anyone else have some additional prayer requests? Uh, yes, my friends in Greensboro, North Carolina, Linda and Jack, 
both have the COVID-19 virus. Oh, my. Mm. He is better, but she is really sick. So continue to pray for Linda and Jack. Linda and Jack. Okay, very good. Very good. Do we have any joys going on this week? Uh, has, has anybody found it? Not to take away from the pandemic that's going on and the challenges that we have, could there be some good that comes out of it? No, nobody has anything to say there. <laughs> yeah, we are uh, finding that we're getting some cleaning done around the house that we would not otherwise have gotten done. So uh, there's one thing to be grateful for. But we'll go ahead and mute the phone calls again. And, Conference uh, muted. And let's take, <clears throat> excuse me, let's take a few minutes here to, to go to God in prayer. Father, though we are dispersed and scattered, yet we are together in spirit. We're grateful for these media that allow us to connect with each other, but Father, we do so look forward to getting together physically as a group of your people. We pray for these needs that have been mentioned this morning, Father, and for those that are unspoken. We pray for those who are serving in this pandemic. We pray for those who are having to make decisions in difficult, unprecedented circumstances about what to do next. And Father, we pray that as we look at these circumstances, that we will recognize our dependence on you and that you will work good out of these circumstances. Go with us in this worship service, Father, that we will turn to you and learn more about connecting with you. And we're grateful that we can do so through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. So as we are thinking together this morning, it, it is indeed a strange time continues to be. We're going to be focusing on Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. And uh, one of the things that happens with virtual church is we don't have copies of the physical bulletin, so you're not seeing uh, the title of the sermon, but the title is The Two Sides of Worship. And in Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 17, we find this. During that time, Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night long. At daybreak, he called together his disciples. He chose twelve of them whom he called apostles, Simon whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon who was called a zealot, Judas the son of James, and Judas Iscariot who became a traitor. Jesus came down from the mountain with them and stood on a large area of level ground a great company of his disciples and a huge crowd of people from all around Judea and Jerusalem and the area around Tyre and Sidon joined him there. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And we chose this passage this morning because it is one of those passages where we see both sides of worship. We see Jesus in solitary worship and we see Jesus in what we might call corporate worship. And both of these things are very important to those of us who follow Jesus. Corporate worship is central to followers of Jesus, of course. When we look at the habits of Jesus, we know that he frequently worshipped with other people. We know he went to temple. He went to the synagogue. And in fact, the, uh, the pattern of Jewish worship was very much a corporate pattern. Jewish people gathered to worship God. They gathered in community. And obviously, I hope it's obvious back then, that they didn't have the Internet, they didn't have telephones. Uh, some of our younger people, uh, my daughter actually asked me once if they had telephones when I was a child. Um, <laughs> 
people think it's pretty recent, but really when we look at history, the span of history, it really is. And so our recent social isolation has caused problems for our Jewish friends and neighbors who need at least 10 people to complete a minyan, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Now, you may or may not be interested in where this comes from. This is something that happens today, but it's based in history. And it's from putting together a couple of verses in the Torah. In Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 2, we find this verse. Say to the whole community of the Israelites, you must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. And as they looked for a definition of a key word in there, the word translated in the Common English Bible is community, then they also looked at Numbers chapter 14, verse 27. Now that is within the story of the 12 spies who went to uh, scope out the land of Canaan. They came back and two of them said it is a wonderful land uh, flowing with milk and honey. Ten of them said we can't do this. Uh, we are like ants in their eyes. They're giants. So this is dangerous. We can't do this. Ten of them. And in Numbers 14, verse 27, God says, How long will this wicked community complain against me? And there's that word again, community. And so they concluded that the minimum number to be a community was ten. Now, whether or not that's biblical reasoning or not, it's interesting. There's a, a logical basis for it, and it is something that has driven uh, Jewish patterns of worship for centuries. So when Jesus gathered with his, uh, his fellow Jews, there were always at least 10 people there, much larger crowds often. We know the temple was a very crowded place. And as one writer said, when Jesus faithfully kept the Sabbath and the vital feast days of his heritage, he did so in community. Jesus was a worshiper as one in a crowd, and it was life-giving. And in fact, that is a lot of what we are missing, is we cannot gather. A casual conversation before we started, uh, several folks mentioned looking forward to getting back into our church building. It's not just the building. It is a place where we can gather together and connect with each other. Now, despite this, we know that church attendance has dropped over the last 50 years, especially in the last 20 years. Uh, a, a couple of research numbers that puts this in perspective. A study done in 2005 and of course, that was 15 years ago. A study done in 2005 showed at that time that only about 23% of Americans showed up to church at least three out of eight Sundays. Now, now think about that, okay? Three out of eight and only 23%. Uh, a similar study at the time showed that on any given Sunday, only about 17% of Americans would be in church somewhere. And it's only dropped off in the last 15 years. In 2002, here's another interesting statistic, only 6% of churches were growing at that time. Yet another one that really struck me is that all churches that started between 1810 and 1960, except for the 1920s, the 1920s were a different time because of the Depression, I suspect, but all churches that started between 1810 and 1960 declined in attendance from 2003 to 2004. Lincoln Park United Methodist Church started in 1906, I think. Linwood started about the same time, uh, I believe maybe about 1916. We fit that pattern. Now, there is a, a book called Bowling Alone, which makes the case that Americans are not taking part in any corporate activities much. Uh, Lions clubs are struggling to get people there, Toastmasters clubs, uh, other civic organizations. We're tending to isolate ourselves even before all of this stuff happened. But interestingly, attendance at house churches and small groups has spiked. So people are going for those smaller gatherings. And that kind of brings us to the other side of what we saw in this passage in Luke. 
Individual worship is also key to the followers of Jesus, as it was to Jesus. And in an odd sort of way, I can't help but wonder, it's really hard to study this kind of thing, so I don't really have reliable statistical information, but I suspect that individual worship has fallen off even more than corporate worship. Everyone's on the run all the time. I can remember as I was growing up that that we would have some time of devotional every evening where we'd spend some time together as a family. We would spend time in prayer. We would spend time in scripture. And it's really hard to do that these days. Not giving that as an excuse, but rather as a pattern. People are on the run so much. I have no way really of checking that, but I do know that solitude was very important to Jesus. In the passage that we started out with from Luke chapter 6, I want you to notice in verse 12 again, it says, During that time Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night long. I, I, I can't think of a time when I did something like that. And it's significant that he spent that time at that time because it was just before he chose the twelve. So he spent that time a long time in prayer because of what was coming up. Mark chapter 1 verse 35 says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. He sought the solitude. Matthew 14, 23, after he had spent time in a large crowd preaching to them, it says, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Now, of course, one of the things that's, that's different here is that this was intentional. It was not forced. And we're in a situation where we're in forced solitude. Maybe not completely by ourselves, but just with our little family group. Um, I've only left the house, I think, twice this week. Our son is just really great about making sure that, that our supplies are taken care of. But we're just right here with just us. And as I've told people before, thanks to our daughter's medical challenges, uh, we're more socially isolated than most people have been for years. But this is even more intense, and for a lot of folks, this is really different. Jesus intentionally sought solitude. And while we would not say that, that we want what's happening to happen, certainly, nevertheless, there can be a fringe benefit to what is happening. We have been forced into a situation where perhaps we can take advantage of the solitude. This is an opportunity if you have been meaning to spend more time in prayer, more time in Scripture. The time is upon us. And it's important for us to have both sides of this. The same writer I referenced a moment ago said, Jesus' public worship side was nourished by his private worship side, and vice versa. Worship is not going to church or private devotions. Worship consists of going to church and one's private prayer life. It's not an either or, it's a both and. Now, at this time of year, usually we're used to the Easter season as a time of corporate worship. And Easter was last Sunday, but we are still in the Easter season. We're in that time between Easter and Pentecost, which will be our next big celebration. And I'm not saying that God caused this pandemic, and certainly not just for this purpose. Yes, God is in charge, but I, I'm, that's a whole theological question for us to dig into another time. What I am certain of is that God doesn't waste pain. Romans 8.28, which we've kind of referenced earlier in this talk, says we know that God works all things together for good, for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. Whatever things happen, God is able to use them. And so what I would urge this morning is that we would redeem the time to continue in worship each day 
so that when we gather physically again, our corporate worship will be that much sweeter. I don't think we'll take that for granted ever again. There is a quote from Henri Nouwen, a uh, noted theologian, and he had this to say about our subject this morning. I'm profoundly convinced that the greatest spiritual danger for our times is the separation of Jesus from the church. The church is the body of the Lord. Without Jesus, there can be no church. And without the church, we cannot stay united with Jesus. I've yet to meet anyone who has come closer to Jesus by forsaking the church. To listen to the church is to listen to the Lord of the church. We are the church, whether we are physically together or not, the body of Christ, the hands and feet of Jesus. We have opportunity, more so than usual, to spend time in solitude. Let us take advantage of it so that when we come together again physically, we are renewed and recharged and able to serve the world. Would you bow with me, please? Father, we do indeed pray for the passing of this pestilence that besets the world right now. But we're also grateful for the slowing down. We pray for those millions who have lost their jobs and for the anxiety we have in facing an uncertain future. But we also ask for peace within such that we may turn to you and make use of this unexpected cessation of busyness. Father, bring us together again and bring us to you each day. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we get ready to go our way, just a little reminder that we are planning the, uh, the get-together via Zoom on Wednesday night. Uh, we had a few people get together last Wednesday. Uh, and, and it was really good to connect, uh, really good to spend that time together. So if you would like instructions on how to do that, uh, it will be in the church newsletter. We will send out uh, a, an email on Wednesday that gives those instructions, and you can always call me or drop an email to me. So we look forward to seeing you in some fashion. And whether you are with us live or whether you are watching via recording, we say to you now, go now in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>